What's going on guys, Fully here with Custom Offsets, Custom Offsets TV on the YouTube. We've got a brand new video, an entire brand new series for you. Today we're digging in to find out what's the hype with the Ford Raptor. About 10 years ago now, Ford introduced the SVT Raptor name and gave every 16-year-old kid a pickup truck to dream about. No longer did they want a cool nope. sports car, they wanted the Raptor. It was everything you wanted a factory truck to be. Upgraded suspension, aggressive looks, and no lack of power either, which is why it wasn't just a kid's dream truck, but also appealing to the guys who were about to buy a Corvette for that midlife crisis. The first generation Raptor, which launched in 2010 and spanned until 2014, was probably best known for its 411 horsepower 6.2 liter V8 that pushed the truck from 0 to 60 in 7.1 seconds, which for a 6,000 pound vehicle is pretty impressive. The first generation Raptor became instantly recognizable with its massive front grille, heat extractors on the hood, and flared fenders and bedsides, making the truck nearly 7 inches wider than the standard F-150. Now, right out of the box, the Raptor was equipped with internal bypass Fox Racing shocks and a double wishbone independent front end, as well as forged steel upper control arms, allowing for 11 inches of travel. Out back, the Fox shocks and a solid axle with leaf springs gave you 12 inches of travel, and the truck came equipped with 35 inch BFG tires. No lift kit or trimming required. Then Ford did something that shocked the off-road community. They announced that the second generation Raptor would come with a V6 power plant. <laughs> But not just any V6, a specially tuned high output twin turbo EcoBoost V6 that pushed 450 horsepower and over 500 foot pounds of torque, shaving more than a whole second off the zero to 60 time of the previous truck. In addition to more power, the second gen Raptor came with a host of other upgrades. Shedding around 400 pounds, the Raptor was now an all aluminum body, but that didn't really improve the fuel economy people complained about in the first generation. EPA estimates for a second gen Raptor are 15 city and 18 highway, but in full disclosure, you won't be able to keep your foot off the gas in one of these trucks. In my experience, I'll typically average anywhere from 11 to 13 miles per gallon, but it sure is a lot of fun. Adding to the fun is the new suspension setup with adjustable nine stage electronically controlled Fox racing shocks providing 13 inches of travel in the front and 14 inches out back. New for the second gen is also six different driving modes, normal, street, snow, mud and sand, rock mode, and my personal favorite, Baja. This mode is tailored specifically to driving at high speed off-road so you can really feel like you're a part of the Ford race team as you fly over just about any terrain comfortably. And speaking of comfort, there's a bunch of interior creature comforts in this truck too. My favorites being the air conditioned seats, a large touchscreen on the dash, a 360 degree camera that's not only useful for parking but also for crawling over obstacles off-road, and a massive twin panel moonroof. Helping this Ford get moving and actually achieving decent gas mileage on the street if you keep your foot out of it is a 10-speed automatic transmission and it's actually pretty good. The different modes in the train management system do a nice job of preventing it from hunting around too much when you leave everything up to the truck, but if you'd rather take control, you can do so by use of the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Grip comes from the same 35-inch BFG tires used on the previous generation, but now Ford offers factory 17-inch beadlocks for the guys who are actually going to use this truck off-road. Now, it's no surprise that many of the Baja-inspired Raptors will never see the Baja Desert, or any dirt for that matter, but honestly, when it comes to pickups, this thing rides really nice on-road too. The suspension is soft and soaks up just about anything you'll encounter on the street. Power is plentiful and the 10-speed keeps your RPMs down on the freeway. The only downfall I can see on using the Raptor as your daily driver is the need to fill up every single day and that the towing capacity is only 8,000 pounds, which is 5,000 pounds less than a standard F-150. And if you do tow 8,000 pounds with your Raptor, just be prepared for a lot of squads. So, does the Ford Raptor live up to the hype? Let us know in the comments below. Peace.